Welcome to DTS 49. The Taken King E3 reveal trailer is live and Diddy and I are about to watch it together. Jump two and a half minutes ahead if you don't want any of the reactions spoiled. You're listening to Destiny the Soul. Welcome, Guardian. Big ship, eh? That's a pretty big ship. Looks like Halo. Is that the but Pillar of Autumn? It does. It does look like Pillar of Autumn, <laughs> doesn't it? Uh oh. What's that energy? Ghosts. It's They're the firing ghosts? up the Mac cannon. <laughs> Oryx. Yeah. Confirmed. Okay. Ooh, he's coming. Oryx is coming. Sick logo, Bungie. <laughs> oh, ships. <laughs> is that the moon? Oh, the moon's getting owned. Looks like it looks like it's a moon. We killed, killed, we killed him. <laughs> we killed Crodo with his dad's sword. Whoa! The take. Do you see that he's taking enemies? Oryx has bat wings. What is this? Oh my gosh! There's a cabal with wings. Oh man, that's what? Where is this? That's a huge bridge. <laughs> that's a hive bridge, by the way. What are, what are these ships in combat, dude? <laughs> it's the bow. The it's the bow. bow. Looks like a glorified Nova bomb. Oh Suck my at gosh! Warlocks. Oh wait, Warlock never mind. Force Lightning. <laughs> Star Wars confirmed. I'm a warlock main now. <laughs> oh, look at the hammer! Look at the hammer! Oh, it <laughs> looks like it can throw multiple of the hammers. Dude, look at these environments. Look at these environments. These are not on disc. Nope. Definitely not. That's Saturn in the background. Did you see that? Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, Oryx. Look at that gun. Did you see that gun? <laughs> what the... What is this? That was the bow in action again. Oh, that Titan helm. Oh my. Oryx with the bat wings. Oh my god, he's literally Satan. Guys, Oryx looks, ex well, not exactly. He looks like Illidan, but cooler. If you play WoW, you know what that is. If you don't, look it up. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> September 15th. 2015. All right. 2015. So the Taken King, my friend. Oh, there's a legendary edition. And you get expansion one, expansion two, and the Taken King. So, speculate time. Legendary version is probably 60 bucks. you think? Uh... The regular version. Oh well, regular is forty, actually, right? Yeah. Okay, that's right. We don't know the price tag of the regular one, but I think the regular is forty, and the legendary edition. By the way, guys, just so you know what we're seeing at the end when it gets to the end of the video, legendary edition. You get Destiny expansion one, expansion two, and the Taken King. I clicked the link, and the website is not up yet. Sorry, <laughs> an unexpected error did occur. So, oh man. Whew. Okay, price speculation real fast. Let's talk about what we saw and all the E3 stuff that people are going to find out later today. I would say the price tag for the Legendary Edition is going to be 30% higher than the regular price of whatever okay. it is. So if it's $40 for the regular one, $60 for the Legendary. Um, yeah. Or maybe 70 because... If we think about the Vanilla Destiny, Vanilla Destiny came out $60, but if you wanted the expansion pass as well, you could get the whatever, the Ghost Edition or the whatever, the Guardian Edition of Destiny, and that was $80, right? Yeah. Or, or was it 90 I think it was 90 actually. eighty nine ninety nine. does that sound right? It does. Yeah, I so either 30 or 50% extra than the base price of the game, so... That's my speculation. Yeah, the box art looks really cool, too. You have the three new supers that were leaked. They are confirmed. You have the Hunter Bow, the Warlock Lightning, and the Flame Hammer for the Titan. Those three look really cool. Oryx looks amazing. Let's just talk about the environments for a second. The only things that I noticed that were, like, recognizable from Destiny 1 was the opening shot of the moon getting wrecked. Enemies yeah. were getting taken. They're literally getting sucked up by Oryx. And then think about it. That Cabal who had the angel wings. What if Oryx modifies them? Yeah. Like once he takes, as in, you know, the Taken, the Taken is going to be his army. It's going to basically be a new quote unquote race in Destiny. 
And he just takes them from whatever environment they're in. Like, I need you to be in my army. And then he manipulates them to modifies them to be more powerful than their base models and throws them at the guardians. And we have to fight them. That's going to be super cool. The enemy with the axe. There was an enemy with an (laughs) axe. That's like, oh my gosh, it looks new. That's the thing that I'm excited about. I was preparing to be very underwhelmed. Granted, today when listeners are listening, if it's Tuesday, at 2.45, Bungie is going to be doing their conference and they're going to be talking more about the Taken King. So we're going off of the E3 release trailer thing that showed the reveal trailer that was on Monday night during Sony's press conference. But, oh man, what what stands out to you biggest from the trailer as we just initial impressions Honestly, I didn't really get a chance to look closely at the guns or the gear that the Guardians were wearing, but definitely the environments that a lot more space. There's, Huge. Like I'm not just in terms of size, but it's in space, right? There's more open areas where we can see Mars in the background, which means we're most likely on a moon of Mars. And just that's really cool. The three supers, the Void Bow Hunter just looks like a glorified Nova Bomb in my opinion. Um, but Again, I'm going to have to see more gameplay of that to see how it, you know, it plays. It's basically so if we think about it, the Void Bow Hunter is the burst super for hunters. The lightning for the arc lightning for warlocks is the sustained super damage. And then yeah. the um the flaming the solar titan hammer. hammer yeah. It looked like you could like throw multiple hammers down like little mini nova bombs multiple or melee also it looked like there were some melee clips in there it oh yeah it looks like it's going to be more versatile than just point and click like the titan slam you You were right we did see saturn in there oh man (laughs) so i don't know if the saturn was um like a hologram projection in a room just yeah. like a like a battle station or whatever, but it, mm-hmm. or if it was in the background and we saw a guardian flying into it. So the Saturn was definitely in the trailer. So Saturn's going to be somewhere in the Taken King. <laughs> the new ships look like X wings that don't have attack foil uh, formation. <laughs> it's just like singular wing. But we see Guardians running on a moon. You're right. It is a moon above Mars. And they're running on this platform. It's a full fire team. And a ship flies in. Multiple ships are flying in above them as if there's like some grand scale campaign going on. There's people above us in orbit flying around. Did you notice that? I didn't notice that. That sounds really cool. I'm going back through it. And I just don't think I've seen skyboxes with ships floating around in them when you're actually fighting stuff. What I'm if terrified. we have like aerial sparrows does that make sense we can yes. summon uh a like ship an air strike or something <laughs> yeah pve style by the way when the titan is pulling out his super for the first time where is he he is at the lighthouse if you yeah. go back and look he's at on it, mercury he is it's like right there we knew that environment's gonna be a part of what's coming up oh my gosh and then how about the architecture of the giant walls these giant gray walls it's obviously hive inspired you Mm -hmm. remember concept art probably like this where it's just these huge monstrous walls and it visually this is pretty unique the bridge shot stands out to me and like you said things look to be more open like yes you're still probably running on singular paths but some of these skyboxes and surrounding areas are huge looking i'm really excited it's it's expanding Destiny's potential, and we're obviously going to more know more details as the week progresses. But it just looks like Taken King's looking good. This this surpassed what I was hoping for. Now I'm going to make my predictions. You guys are probably going to know what has actually transpired by the time you're listening to this. I'm calling it two raids. I'm telling you right now, there's going to be two raids. I bet with this, and if there's not, that's okay. But overall. Very excited. It's cool to see the Legendary Edition. That confirms something that we've been wondering. Taken King will probably be $40 for us players who already have the current content that have Expansion 1 and 2. And then the Legendary Edition is probably going to be like, let's say, 60 to 90 Somewhere in that range that gets people all the way caught up and the current gen expansion. So, whew, I am thrilled man closing they thoughts? did they did confirm more playstation exclusives after oh the one trailer. strike one new multiplayer map and gear but so basically the same as every expansion ever yeah in destiny since you know it's yeah 
they're just continuing the PlayStation um, exclusivity. We don't know at this point if year one Destiny exclusive content will be available to Xbox owners. It should be, uh, but we don't know if it's going to be available once the Taken King comes out. By the way, more stuff. The Hunter is holding a brand new hand cannon model at the end of the trailer. The Warlock is holding a gun that is the messenger body, but it's black. And it looks like the Titan's holding some sort of scout. It almost looks like a House of Wolves scout, but I can't tell. New gear looks great. Oryx. Oryx (laughs) looks incredible, dude. Oh, well... I think that is going to do it for our initial E3 reactions. We actually have a show recorded 20 minutes that we did um, talking about the patch that went into effect that's about skull loss that we want you guys to take a listen to. Additionally, we talk about um, the Taken King and how Bungie can really bridge the content gap for a new player. So we hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Uh, We're going to wait and see how tomorrow plays out or today when you're listening to this for when Bungie announces the rest of the Taken King stuff, which wasn't today. Uh, If it's enough news, we'll see you before next Tuesday. If it's not enough news, we'll probably just see you guys next Tuesday. Please tweet us your reactions and feedback to this E3 week over at Destiny the Show. So, Diddy, let's hop into the show. So, in the weekly update, the main thing that happened was the Skull Loss nerf, or I don't know if you want to call it a nerf as much as it is improvements, but it also feels a little bit like a nerf. Diddy, do you want to run through what they're actually doing to the Skull Loss fight? And by the time people are listening to this, it's gone into effect. They're basically doing what they did with the Valis to Arik strike. They're just making Skull Loss, in general, easier to kill. And they're also going to change up the modifiers as well, so no more elemental burns. Um, So reading right off the Bungie weekly update, new modifier combinations, so Arc, Void, and Solar Burn will be removed, so they won't even be in the rotation at all. So other Prison of Elders modifiers like Brawler, Exposure, those kinds of things are going to be introduced in the Skull Loss fight. Boss health is reduced to compensate for a lack of burn, so that's what we saw with Valis to Arx Strike. They're just reducing his health, so it'll just be easier to kill. Um, it actually might take the same duration now that I think about it, since they're removing the burn, it, it's just, it's just a nice compensation. As they say, minions will spawn at predictable health intervals. So once you get skull loss to a certain percentage of health, that's when the next wave of ads will spawn. So it'll just be a little bit less chaotic in that arena. And then a minor adjustment to the unit makeup of the combatant waves less servitors so basically the way it worked is every 90 seconds a new wave of ads would spawn and the way it worked out is you had a bunch of spullet spullet bullet sponging servitors that had like more hp than skolos himself and so by the time you actually would kill all the ads and then you'd get maybe eight 10 seconds if you were quick to put shots into skull loss and then the next wave of enemies would spawn i really like the predictable health intervals so you're basically probably looking at 10 percent increments or whatever it's going to be where ads will spawn so that once you've wiped a wave you and your team have time to take out skull loss the other thing that they mentioned is the skull loss fight was taking players too long from their data they did not intend for the fight to take some folks an hour and a half to two hours Dang. to complete just the skull loss fight So I will say that the removal of Arc Void and Solar Burn is a direct response to people using the burn strategies. Now, I do still think people will be able to nuke him down within a minute and a half or two minutes, but maybe it'll be a little bit different. What do you think? I think uh, I'm really glad that I defeated Skolas with Arc Burn because that was by far the hardest ever because every enemy in that arena except for the uh, Shrapnel Captains and Skolas himself and the Servitors, all of them use Arc Damage and that was just insane. You had to manage, you know, you just had to not die and that was, that was pretty fun for me. Um, But I think you're right. Skolas will still be able to be burned down pretty quickly, even though if there is no burn. I mean, they are reducing the health. You know, people with three Gallahorns are still going to nuke him in 40-something rockets like Solar Burn the first week. So I think it's just going to change the mechanics a little bit. I think there was a lot of negativity thrown at the Skolas fight in general, and it was unnecessary because I thought the Skolas fight was the difficulty it needed to be for level 35 Prison of Elders. Yeah, I think we're starting to see a trend, though, that we'll probably see. It happens in other MMOs, I'll be honest with you. this The expansion comes out, the end game stuff is hard and difficult, like the top tier stuff, 
and then they want the rest of the community to experience it. So it receives a little bit of a, a, a tune or an adjustment that makes it a little bit easier. Now, I've yet to test this to say this is easier, but I will say having minions spawn at predictable health interviews, <laughs> interviews, I can't talk, man, this is crazy, <laughs> intervals is way better than the 90 second death wave. It just was so chaotic and challenging. So uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with these changes. I think we're going to see more and more like them. And if players want to experience the most high end difficult content, beat it when it comes out. That's basically what you want to do when a, a new expansion comes out, you and your team be focused on getting it done quickly. That way, who knows if they make changes to the fight down the road, you can be that elitist who's like, I remember Skolas Arkburn. <laughs> and I didn't mean that as a, a tug of you or like an insult towards you. I'm just saying, <laughs> if you want to do it and have that prestige, do it early. Please, Guardian, let me help you. If you come looking for wise words, I shall try, but I ask you to turn them to action. So with the Taken King coming out, I want to talk about how to ease new players into Destiny. When you have these new players who are going to have a fresh start with the Taken King, it's honestly going to be overwhelming, in my opinion, the amount of content that they're going to need to work through. Now, it doesn't mean a brand new player starting at Taken King has to go through a perfectly linear progression arc of, all right, I hit level 20, I now need to do all Dark Below stuff, and then all House of Wolf stuff, and then get to the Taken King content. But... I do want to talk about that transition from I just hit level 20 to reaching endgame because there's this massive gap currently in terms of educating players. I mean, how many people have we talked to, Diddy, that get discouraged with Destiny once they hit level 22 or 23 and they don't know how to get to max level? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. So a Taken King, right around the corner, we're going to have new players. What can Bungie do? to improve the new player experience and make it easier. Not easier in terms of like the difficulty of doing the stuff, but communicate more effectively with new players how to get to max level. More tutorials and adding matchmaking for vanilla Destiny stuff. I think that would, be, that would be the easiest or the most obvious re the ex explanation. You know, there's not a lot of tutorials in Destiny, you know. I don't know that this particular vendor in the tower exists. I don't I don't know that, you know, speaking as a brand new player, hypothetically, I don't know that Cade 6, the Hunter Vanguard, sells legendary gear. I don't know that there's a Vanguard quartermaster near the ship lady or whatever. You know, yeah. there's there needs to be more waypoints, more tutorials to walk people through, new players through this vanilla content because, you know, maybe some people didn't want to get into the Destiny hype train the first year. They wanted to give it a year to, you know, fix all the initial bugs out and then they're going to give it a chance at the Taken King. This is, they're jumping headfirst into the deep end. And yeah. if there's no lifeguards around to help you out, then it's just going to be, they're going to be in over their heads and they're just going to, they're just going to walk away. I think a cool idea would be to teach a player how you can get vendor items that will get you to a nice light level would be a, a quest. When you hit level 20, mm -hmm. a new quest unlocks, you do some mission, Vanguard whatever it quests. is. Yeah, and it takes you through, I don't know, let's say two missions, three missions, and then you redeem that quest for one piece of gear from your quartermaster and you're like oh that's cool so that's how i do this and through that quest it explains to you this is the bro who sells you the light level gear stuff that you want to get close to end game and if you want more of it you need to revisit him with these marks the other thing you know destiny has those little what would you call them pop-up windows basically when you complete the main quest and it's like guess what's now unlocked or prison of elders is ready oh, to go yeah I mm -hmm. think you could do more of those when a player hits level 20. My story with Destiny is, got the game, was playing it, you were on PS4, I was on Xbox One, I didn't have many people on Xbox One that I knew who were playing regularly, so I got to level 26, I think, using vendor-only gear, and at that point, with nobody to run Vault of Glass, I was sort of done with the game, I was just playing PvP. In terms of PvE stuff, I didn't really run Nightfalls, I didn't know what endgame things were like, or running the Heroic Weekly. And then we ran Vault of Glass together, I think in October, maybe it was. Yeah. And at that point, it totally changed, because I had a group of people who could teach me <laughs> what actually you do in Destiny once you reach that level point, and it all changed at that point. Once I had a crew that took me through that, 
Night Falls Every Week, Heroics, and then we look at The Dark Below, and it just grew from there. I want to see them really focus on those big gaps in terms of when you hit level 20 and then gearing up, I feel like there's a communication issue. Any ideas? No, I mean, do you think that with the Taken King, so as a new level 20 player in the House of Wolves, you can just get the vendor gear and go straight to 34, right? I mean, Uh, 32. 33, I think. It was 32. 32. 32. Yeah. So I can get from level 20, buy all the vendor gear I need, and go straight to 32. I don't have to get to level 30. I don't have to get to 26, 28, whatever. I can just go straight to almost max level, right? And then if I get that that etheric light, I can be level 34. Yes. Do you think with the Taken King, the new vendor gear is going to be exactly the same? So like no. new, new players... Vendor gear. For sure. New, well, I mean, that's what I mean. Like, it's going to have the new light level, right? So yes. as a level 20, you don't have to worry about hitting the level um, for hard mode Vault of Glass level 30 or Crota normal mode or Crota hard mode 32, 33. Basically, what I'm saying is it's going to be so much easier for newer players once they hit level 20 and once they get that gear to do all of the end game activities. It's going to be yes. way easier than yes. people like us. Totally. And that's just the nature of a game of this type. You know, the previous gen content is going to be very, very easy, especially uh, we're recording this, by the way, before E3. So we don't know what the max level of characters is going to be. But let's just spitball and say it's 38 or 40. If you're a 38 and 40, you're going to demolish going back through the older content raids, you know, or the older content in general. That's just the way it works with these types of games. Now, whatever our end game activities, the raid, Oryx, that stuff is going to be difficult for the max level character. But I do believe when Taken King gets here, you're going to see new vendor gear in the tower that is year one, like max light level or maybe above year one max light level. Because basically all of our ascended gear, we don't know what's going to happen to it once we get to the (laughs) Taken King because year one is ending with the Taken King. Is it going to be a whole new set of gear at that point that we need to get? That's what I believe. Yeah, and the only reason I mention that is because, you know, nowadays, once new players hit level 20, they're like, now what? Exactly. And once once the Taken King comes out, th- some of those players might be like, well, I don't know what to do. It doesn't really help me. I'm just going to, I don't want to grind, you know, 14 or 18 more levels just to get to max from level 20 to whatever the max light level is. Yes. Um, it's just, and that, that might deter them away. But I'm just going to say, no, it's going to be way easier for you guys than it was for us. You just yep. get the vendor gear, however easy that is for you, and you're going to be able to do a lot more end game content than we were able to. You're, you're going to be able to do Vault of Glass. You're going to be able to do Crota's End. You're going to be able to do Prison of Elders. And you're going to be able to do the new end game stuff. So you're going to have the, all this end game content available for you you're just unlocking a whole new game once you hit level 20 or 30 or whatever absolutely i would love to see them go back through the missions and retweak the amount of xp that you actually earn since you and i both have three characters you have like six because you play on playstation 4 also i have four (laughs) we've gone through the story a lot and when you go through it there's intervals where it's like okay i just finished that story mission you're following this nice arc and then it's like no you need to be two levels higher to complete the next story mission and you go well, how am I going to get those levels? Oh, and most people just grind strikes. I would love it if they would just tweak it to where if you want to get 1 to 20, you play through the story missions, and that's it. It's That's the amount of XP that you need. Maybe level 19, so it forces them to do the strike playlist for like three or four times. But that is my least favorite part of going back through and rolling an alt, is those dumb gaps where it's like, <laughs> I'm two levels below where I need to be, but I'm completing the story normally. How many new players did their bounties? Fresh day one players knew, if I did my bounties, I'm going to level up way faster and have my rep to a point that I need when I hit 20. Yeah, exactly. And it's actually kind of funny you mentioned that. With my Warlock, I never, I actually never did the last two story missions missions in Vanilla Destiny Mm -hmm. until like a week ago when I was playing with you and Vito because Mm. I had, I just hit level 20 before I had to do those two story missions. And Mm. I just never did them because I just didn't want to. But I think, I think, you know, we're, as we're talking right now, E3 has already happened. You know, people will already know this, but I'm going to speculate just uh, ignorantly that we're thinking too close-minded about this what if like you said Bungie tweaks the 
all the story missions up until the Taken King. So all the mm. vanilla Destiny, all the Dark Below, and all the House of Wolves story missions. Yeah. Instead of just capping at level twenty, what if they just extend that to thirty, and thirty is the new base? Hmm. Or something like like that. Well, it's it's a linear. So you hit your level 20, you beat the campaign, and then you immediately get to do the Dark Below quests. They tweak those levels to match, and then you immediately do the House of Wolves. I shouldn't say quests. I should say missions for Dark Below, and then missions for House of Wolves. Is that what you're thinking? Like, back to back? Yeah. So, like, once you hit level 20, 21 through 34 right now, those are light levels. What if, like, levels 1 through 26 were just regular levels. Yeah. And then yeah. levels 27 through 34, 38, 30, whatever. Those are the new light levels. Yeah. Something like that. I could see it, you know. It's interesting to think about, you know, our listeners probably already know what they're going to do because <laughs> E3 already happened, but I do think they can improve their communication and I hope Taken King pushes it forward in that way. It's time for... It came from Twitter! It's part of the show where we read out your tweets. Remember to send your questions to at Destiny the show. First up is at Inside Torn Apart. And he asks, someone needs to come up with a term to describe a player that's in between a hardcore and a casual. I fall into that gray area. Diddy, what would you call that character in between? In between hardcore and casual? Yes. A regular player. <laughs> See, I, <laughs> I don't know. With, I have no idea. I came up with cash core. I liked that. Cash and core. he said, sounds like a small farming village in southern Russia. <laughs> Best know for very angry and depressed chickens. Best known. I, Twitter. You don't have your auto correct. Anyway, at Shoddy Boy writes, have there been distress calls from Firebase Delphi? Was it wiped out in some House of Wolves quest line I missed? No sign of it in the Iron Banner. Did he, <laughs> isn't it? like reduced chances they re- they greatly reduced the mars maps in iron banner because they're the most unbalanced in iron mm. banner currently blind watch is stupid it's retarded i hate that map in control. so broken for control but i actually really liked firebase delphi i thought it was fine you know it it was a little bit unbalanced and it was frustrating if you spawned on c but nah, it, they just greatly reduced the rotation of those two maps yeah at Dale Ward 87, haven't played since Vault of Glass. Just came back for House of Wolves and loving it. Well, welcome back. That is a long hiatus. Welcome back indeed. At Snout, don't know what you guys think, but the Messenger is the best House of Wolf <laughs> weapon I've found. And yes, I think I it's agree. pretty good, man. Like I'm doing a review for Planet Destiny of the Adept Messenger and... Man, it's vicious at long distance, don't you think, dude? I am a pulse rifle main now Ooh. because of that weapon. It is so good. I love pulse rifles in PvP now. They're just so good. I love them. Support role, man. As long as you're not like up close. If you're up close, those TLWs and thorns are going to be smacking. Yeah, you I've face. changed my play style completely. I don't rush anymore. I just sit back with the messenger sniper and golden gun and just take people out from a distance. Because nice. I don't want to deal with shotguns. I just don't. Yeah. Now that everybody has free matadors and party crashers and judgments. <laughs> At LP Kid 3387, the color of my screen after playing in the Iron Banner this week, so many thorns. And he sent us just a picture of a green square. So, yes, <laughs> thorn is everywhere. But relax. Thorn's going to get a nerf, I bet you, in two weeks, dude. I bet you weapon balance is going to be talked about after E3 hype mellows out. At Kite Flyer of Hell, can you still get Dark Below legendaries? Say the fall will probably kill you from anything asking for a friend did I? I think they can still drop yes they can but still you can't randomly buy drop. them yeah so um, like engrams yeah. too you know yeah you can get them in engrams i think it's like a no basically because there's no way you're gonna sit there and try and get one of the dark below weapons like just randomly <laughs> if it's a specific one you're going for because then you're competing with the whole vanilla loot table also very slim chance but yes it happens at KD Wolf 77 for everyone asking, I listen to Destiny the Show podcast. Big fan of these guys. Well, thank you, KD Wolf. We appreciate you listening. At Lane Zero, started my PvP part of the Thorn Mounty, and I'm using Word of Crota, and I really like it. Which is better? Diddy, this is yours. Thorn. 
in both PVE and PVP. Th- Word of Crota is a, just a disappointing legendary, in my opinion. Um, it's good. It's got a, ni- a nice rate of fire, but if it's not a Void Burn Nightfall, I would almost never use Word of Crota. So, yeah, get yeah. your thorns. It's gonna be nerfed soon. I promise it's gonna be, you. It's gonna be nice. And once you get Thorn, PVP yes. is gonna become easy mode. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Last tweet today is from the effing monkey. 1.83 in regards to his KD. Best yet, thanks for podcasts and encouragement. I now enjoy PvP. And he sent us a picture of him rocking out in PvP. Well, thank you. We appreciate the kind words. That's going to wrap up this week's show. Diddy, where can people find your content? Well, actually, starting this week, we're going to do weekly Friday streams on twitch.tv slash show. So I'll be over there nice. this weekend. And you can follow me on Twitter at diddy dts d-i-t-t-y d-t-s i still have a few more edits to upload to youtube.com slash whooshness w-o-o-o-s-h-n-e-s-s and that's it excellent you can follow me at bbk dragoon or on youtube.com slash bbk dragoon big shout outs to our friends destinytracker.com the best place for all the stats within the world of destiny you can check out everything from pve to trials of osiris pvp prison of elders lots of great stats over at destinytracker.com visit destinytheshow.com for all the links from today's show and more remember remember to tweet us at destiny the show Hopefully E3 goes amazing. We know it probably did because by the time this happened, whatever, time warp. Anybody listening, we'd love to hear your feedback from E3. Have a great rest of your week and we'll talk with you next time.